project aims to monitor the effects of climate change on Indigenous communities regarding their health, heritage and lifestyle values in order to sustain and preserve their culture whilst also bringing awareness to climate change and the community group themselves. And um, the reason we're doing this is there is a, uh, an abundance or a lack thereof of effective monitoring solutions and what's happening is it's blurring our vision and our understanding of um, you know, how the environment is, is impacting them. Our solution is to create a mobile application that allows individuals to make entries related to the specific climate change implications that they have observed and then also to comment on the effects they believe that this implication can have on their community, their cultural heritage and the environment around them. To promote engagement, we propose to implement a reward system. The, re the rewards will be linked to local Indigenous businesses promoting cultural awareness. This project has given me the opportunity to make a valuable contribution to a project that I am genuinely interested in and a project which I know has the potential to improve the lives of everyday Australians and also the world at a greater capacity. It's more personal to us than just, you know, I'm getting a preset scenario from a textbook, um, like Vincent has said earlier. Um, and because it's so personal to us and because we can actually relate to it, um, it allows us to, you know, have a, a more personal connection, it allows us to really, you know, get the creative juices flowing so we can make the best projects possible. Hello, everybody. I'm Joseph, one of the developers who created the application, and I'll be taking you through an in-depth demonstration of our MVP's main functionalities alongside some user stories to give you an example of what our solution is capable of. The application was co-developed with Ethan, whilst the design was meaningfully crafted by both Alison and I. Before I begin, I'd like to point out that the backgrounds you'll see throughout the demo are a set of Indigenous related imagery, like art, locations, and people which was purposely included to improve the sense of community found within the application. Additionally, the majority of dummy data displayed in the demo is being transmitted directly from an online database. That is to say, our MVP is fully functional and syncs across multiple devices. With our solution's main objective being the mobilization of citizen science to mitigate climate change risk, I'd like to begin by showcasing our survey system, the core of our application. The structure behind entries that a user makes is split into three sections. One, data on environmental observations. Two, their geographical location. And the last, opinions on the state of Indigenous health, culture and well-being. As you can see, we've aimed to keep entries short and concise so that users are able to document events they see in real time and to keep the engagement levels high, an issue which often plagues longer surveys. The split into a two-page survey gives users breathing room, whilst a single input type helps to ensure that files generated for analysis follow a consistent structure. We also took into account the data that we'd be receiving and how we can structure our surveys to provide the most meaningful information possible to the scientists who request it. By combining data from all sections, scientists are gaining an understanding of the impact of climate change on Indigenous heritage, but also local in real time environmental events that may be impacting upon these measures. To ensure integrity when dealing with citizen science, we've optimized for bad data isolation as well, meaning we've simplified the process of identifying and flagging poor quality and inappropriate data that some may send. Imagine you are Clive Fell, a 30 year old scientist employed by CSIRO to analyze data to find rainfall patterns and trends within Brumby's Lake. As a climate scientist, you would want to be able to monitor data on community sentiment and rainfall levels within the area so that you can build accurate data models, inform residents of the best strategies to prepare for extreme weather, and involve resident feedback in policy creation. This can be achieved by extracting data from custodians' database and thanking users for their data through the message and feed system, whilst also sharing the extent of the impact in order to encourage them to continue contributing. But what about the surrounding aspects of the application? For this, we decided upon the implementation of an account system, which looks at factors like gender and Indigenous descent. By collecting this, we further enhance the quality of our data, providing context behind the people that are posting what entries. 
Alongside this, a history function gives users the chance to look back and reflect on their journey observing the environment and the state of the Indigenous community, which we've taken the opportunity to innovate on by generating intrinsic motivators. When entries have been analysed, users receive visual stimuli indicators and thank you messages from respective analysts viewable in the profile page. This exists to inform users, to let them know that they're doing good in the world. Perhaps our biggest innovation, however, is actually our point system, which aims to provide users direct and tangible incentives for their contribution. Each time a user makes an entry, they receive points, which ranks them on a leaderboard visible on the home page. But these points serve a more important function, which are acting as a currency for rewards. By partnering with the government alongside local communities, Indigenous and non-Indigenous businesses will allow users to trade in points they've obtained for various prizes, like discounts. Now picture this, you are Kiara Lee, a 32-year-old mother of three seeking to remain involved within your community. You hope to instill a strong sense of connection, heritage and culture amongst your children. As a community member, you would want to be able to pass down your culture's rich heritage and traditions so that you can ensure the preservation of the Indigenous belonging, connection to the land and other Indigenous people within your family. This can be achieved by buying products and investing time into Indigenous-owned businesses and events using the vouchers and contributing to local environment observations with respect to the health of Indigenous traditions. Given the ample time we had to devise and develop our application, we were able to include a news and events function visible on the home page. News delivers important information relevant on a national scale, whilst the events section encapsulates all the significant Indigenous related activity within your local area, viewable with just a simple click. This means that users can stay up to date with what's going on in the community around their glance. For the purposes of the MVP, news and events link directly to website articles. But in the future, we hope to create a converter that allows users to read articles directly in app, perhaps interacting with them in some way. Put yourself in the shoes of Mr. Warwick Jones, a 45-year-old community engagement manager looking to promote Indigenous-related community events like bushland cleanups within youth. As a community manager, you would want to be able to create exposure for community events through a platform popular with the youth so that you can engage them in Indigenous traditions. This could be achieved by marketing the event on the app's home page and using rewards like entry discounts to encourage youth to participate. Once again, I would like to reiterate the importance of the fully functional aspect of our MVP application, which allows us to test queries on the unstructured data received. I'll leave things to Alison, who will now elaborate further on the UI and UX design choices we've made. The design of Custodian used the 10 Nielsen heuristics to basically align with the user requirements and knowledge across the two diverse user groups. We wanted to ensure that redeeming rewards was an easy process as not many people may be used to redeeming rewards online. So to do this, we made sure that the status of whether you could afford a reward was color coded by a blue circle on the bottom right. And this made it clear of the system status. We also used a navigation bar throughout the whole app to make it easier to switch from your profile page adding an entry and using the home dashboard as well. Error messages were also used to help users recover if they accidentally entered an empty data field as displayed on the right image. By being able to look at also keeping a consistent and clean design, we also made sure that things were easily identifiable as seen by the post history where it's easy to identify what is a post and looking what is a message as well. Following this, we wanted to make sure that adding new entries was a fast and easy process as well. As exemplified by the consistent design of the sentiment sliders that exhibit the community's thoughts and feelings about how climate change is affecting them as well. We also wanted to make sure that creating an account was an easy process by providing constant help buttons to allow for help and documentation to progress with the process tested these functionalities against two different use cases as per the Agile process to ensure any bugs or issues were caught out early before the initial rollout phase. In the initial rollout of Custodian, we plan to market in collaboration with local and Indigenous businesses and organisations to widen their engagement with diverse user groups. The gamification element also will be a sole focus to ensure that users understand that being able to redeem rewards for the efforts kept them on a consistent basis to continue returning to the app.
Financially, we wanted to ensure that we had proposed partnerships with government bodies and non-for-profit sectors within the same interests and being able to exemplify that impact that custodians' purpose is making. We also wanted to ensure that leaderboard was kept as a long-term feature to ensure that users continue to build a community and friendly competition amongst them as well. And being able to exemplify the messaging function also ensures to exemplify how big an impact custodian users are making on Australia's climate change. Custodian faces risk within its initial rollout and future implementation. To minimize this risk, we have identified Tasmania as our test phase and initial rollout plan. This will ensure that the wider reach is kept at a minimal standard where we can control the testing phase and ensure that bugs and issues are resolved quickly as well. We have ensured that the future implementation of the app as well is done by a region by region basis rather than a national rollout. As you can see, we have identified five risks across different privacy concerns, the sustainance of long term use and data integrity as well. We wanted to ensure that we had addressed these issues by being able to place a good structured process within the app itself and establish a strong community amongst custodians users. Use of geolocation and personal information to create an account and also to conduct certain functionalities, we had to consider ethical and privacy concerns within the design of the app. The first thing we did was to offer up a prompt box every time a user wants to enter data. This ensured them with the knowledge that they were consenting to sharing their data and having their data stored within the database to be used by the scientific community. The second consideration was the abuse of the system's rewards, and this was to enable a future implementation of a set limit of how many times or how many points a user can accrue according to their location or postcode. The third thing was also the data quality control. And by having structured data fields, it makes it easier for scientists to filter through good and bad data and harder for users to enter bad quality data.